one. And welcome everybody to another Smart Money Circle update. I'm Adam Sarhan. With me today is David Gemmett, who is the founder, CEO of Cerberus Sentinel. Ticker symbol is CISO. The website is CerberusSentinel.com. Uh, David, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Adam. I appreciate it. So David, can I always like to begin, can you tell us a little about your journey to get you to the point where you are today? I'd love to. Um, it's an interesting journey. So I started my first company when I was 23. Um, it, uh, it was called ARPANET, which most people don't know, became the internet. And uh, I was one of six backbone companies that succeeded, even though I probably shouldn't have, but I had great mentors around me. So this is my seventh organization uh, that I've started. Uh, along the way, I've helped during my time of exit of my companies or selling them. I've helped others with other companies or you know, help create companies with folks. But this company itself was in the making all from 23 to the experience I have today. Um, and again, the reason success is you get really smart people around you. And if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. I believe in that 100%. And uh, the success is, comes from having really smart people around me and having a dream. And that dream becomes reality when everybody jumps on board. Otherwise, it's just a daydream and you go on with your life. So it's all about execution and people believing in what you're doing. Um, this company was started. I had just exited my last company, decided to retire, but I had a lot of customers start calling me. They've been my previous customers over the last you know, 20 plus years. I'm saying 20. But... Uh, so large Fortune 500 companies, they know I'm a geek and uh, I've started companies. And so I said, look, I'm not working, but you're a friend of mine. I'll go out to dinner with you. CEO of Host Hotels, right? He belongs to a golf course here. And I'm like, hey, take me golf, we will dinner. And tomorrow I'll help you with your, whatever you need. Well, it came pretty quickly that cyber uh, six years ago was kind of unfamiliar Right. So people, one thing I know about CEOs or COOs, a lot of them don't like to go into position without knowing. And so this happened four or five times and I'm one guy and these companies are fortune 500 with offices everywhere in the world. So I had to start calling friends of mine. I would call, well, for example, compliance. I have a compliance officer. I need your help with AAA, right? That's one of the clients. General dynamics. I mean, those are large entities, host hotels. So by the way, I need a gap analysis. So I call another friend of mine that had a company. And then these guys are PCI DSS3, financial services, OC2. I need some compliance folks to help me with that as well as do a gap analysis of the company. I can't do all the work alone. So I started getting six or seven companies farming out to my friends. And they're like, what are you getting out of this? I'm like, they pay me with a consultant, but I'm using you so you get paid, so it all wins. Well, eventually I started talking to my, my friends who had their companies and their different pillars of cyber. I started hearing from the executive levels. I don't understand cyber. Why are they charging me so much? And I'd come in and go, they're probably charging a little over much, but they're not giving you a solution. They're trying to sell you a product. And that's where I trademark cybersecurity is a culture, not a product. And so... <laughs> Um, <clears throat> just happens to be that these high level executives are not only my friends, but used to be my customers. So we had pretty good jobs, but what is your exit? I'd ask all my friends, what's your exit? What are you going to do? You're a regional company or you're not growing like you should. Um, most of them say, what's an exit? <laughs> because they'd never run or uh, exited companies. And so I said, what if I did like my first and second company? did a roll up, but not really a roll up. You, I get public and you trade your private chips for public chips, okay? Some of them said, no, I'm making way too much money. And by the way, you're not public, how are you gonna do that? Some was, some was, uh, some were fearful of it. I said, okay, we'll come back and see you. And so I did um, in Phoenix, a round table with some of the executives here, because we got some folks I've known for 30 years, like Avnet, Roy, uh, Insight, um, Tim and Eric Crown, you know, the founders, 
the, the, just the list was on and they're always been there for each other. And so I was waiting for them to tell me what was wrong with my idea, bringing these people together. All of them said, great job, Dave. Because when I started the internet or the internet company, they go, what is the internet? <laughs> when I started CDC communications, they were like, you can't compete. Clear data networks or clear data um, networks was HIPAA compliant host solution for healthcare. How are you going to get, you know, records from electronic medical records in the cloud? They'll never get to you. Right. Everybody's thumbs up. <clears throat> so three of those people in those, um, in the meetings showed up at my door 48 hours later and said, when are we going nice. to stop this? And I'm like, I'm just thinking about it. And so Stephen, one of our board members knew we were going public and he said, what's your ticker symbol? And I said, CCSE, server, cyber, sound report. He said, okay, comes back 15 minutes later and says, no, it's a delisted Chinese food restaurant. I go, okay, no Chinese, no food. Oh, and yeah, to seriously. I said, I doubt it's available. How about chief information security officer? CISO, what's that mean? I'm like, never mind, just go see. 15 minutes later, I get an email, email from him and he goes, we got it. It's time to go public. So nice. So I wanted this all the way through. Um, the first initial uh, six acquisitions, we went to OTC, which I would not suggest to anybody, but we had to prove to Wall Street. I didn't want to take PE or VC money. And then we funded through, we went public on, well, we did a re-IPO onto NASDAQ January 21st of this last year, this year. And um, since then, we've brought together 16 companies worldwide. Well and, done. Uh, there's talent everywhere in the world. It's just not a U.S. talent issue. It's an issue with 4 million job openings going to 12. I don't need a million people. Just give me a couple thousand. We're really strong. Wow. Very, very well done. So that's a remarkable story. I love the serial entrepreneur inside of you. I've got a similar instinct inside of me with that bug, if you will, the entrepreneurial bug. Um, I love the fact that you've gone, you went back and you just looked forward instead of looking backwards because you noticed all these things before other people did. So there's a good arbitrage play there. And um, I love the fact that you're in cybersecurity and cybersecurity obviously is very much in demand. So Dave, I guess the next question is, can you tell us a little about your company from an investor standpoint? A large, large part of our audience are investors, and we just like to know a little about what you guys do and how you're positioned to so the solutions you provide going forward. Ah, I appreciate that. <clears throat> well, as I said, with the initial companies, we created the pillars. So we are equipment agnostic. And by the way, everybody likes to use us because we don't recommend products because Typically, a company will buy a product and then another product and have to be serviced, but they may have six, seven, Fortune 500 may have 16, 18, 20 vendors. Well, we look at all the products holistically and how it affects your company, and then we get them to work together, which a lot of, all of them are disparaging and they disparage each other or they're not working complementary. So we initially do compliance because that's the roadmap for cybersecurity. We see how your compliance is, what you map to, what you need. And then we look at your company holistically, not just take cyber out of it. We look at security physically, socially, and your company. What is the assets you're trying to protect? Is it hospital systems, personal healthcare information, or is it credit card, you know, PCI? So, <clears throat> or PII. So that's what we do. And then we help roadmap so we're a virtual CISO, we help you roadmap a future because most C-levels at that level need some help. So we look at their budget, try to schedule it out so they can keep compliance. Cybersecurity is a journey, not an endpoint. In fact, if anyone that's an investor out there and has a solution for cyber that solves it all. Yeah, seriously. Bring Please, it to me. No, yeah, bring it on. I investors. Um, so our company looks at every part of your company and how you have your cyber posture. And we look at the whole company, whether it's regional, national, international, and then we work on a plan to help implement it. And if you don't have compliance or up to date, we'll help you get there. And then we do remediation for the things because we're pretty thorough. And so we have a list of things that we come out with that says, um, you have, a laundry list of things to do, do you have the ability to fix it? A hundred out of a hundred times, I don't have any spare people. 
because they're busy doing their jobs. So we said, can we help you? We'll be your partner and help you get to that posture. And um, believe it or not, we, there can be a hundred more companies like us out there and we wouldn't compete because there's so much business. In fact, to let your followers know who aren't cyber experts, Adam, I'll ask you a question. How much money in 2021 do you think was stolen or created damage worldwide? And oh, well, well, actually, this is not a fair question because I looked at your deck. I saw $170 billion. Uh, <laughs> I did not know that before your deck, though. <laughs> oh, 10.5 or 6.5 trillion. 6.5 trillion. Wow. Okay. We only spent worldwide. Oh, 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 I see. That's on, on page. Okay, I got it. Yeah, that's further up. I was looking further down. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, 6 trillion loss of cybercrime in 2021, 11.4 million admitted, estimated to reach 10.5 trillion by 2025. That's 170 billion spending annualized globally on info security for 2021. It's a 300% increase in cybercrime since the pandemic began and new ransomware victim every 11 seconds and 3.5 unfilled jo million job openings in cybersecurity. Wow, that's insane. That's a lot. Forrester and Gardner believe it's going... And Cyber um, Magazine believe it's going to 10.5 trillion by 2025. So Dave, further down, it says the addressable market opportunity, $170 billion in global info security spending in 2021. Oh, that's spending versus the, okay, I got it now. I, thanks for that clarification. So the size of the cybersecurity is 6 trillion in 2021 and spending is 170 billion. Is that correct? That's correct. Gotcha. It's okay. Soccer, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's insane. So someone's being hacked every 11 seconds. That's unbelievable. So before it was a black box and people like, it never happened to me. It's not a matter of if anymore. It's a matter of when. I mean, 35% of the traffic on the internet is bots mm -hmm. looking for, you know, a penetration point. Right. They're looking to insert something so they can get into your data. So you've heard a lot about ransomware. That was kind of under the sheets until the pandemic, but the pandemic really pushed it to where people started working from home mm -hmm. and they made the mistake of, oh, well, I've got my computer at home. I'll dial in from you know, my home office. What if your family is using it? What if you have teenage kids that go right. somewhere they should, right? Right. Kids are curious and they pick up a virus. Well, it's like the pandemic. You probably know some people who got um, COVID. Right. Talk to them. Could you tell they were sick? Because it happened, you know, it could be up to seven days. Right. It's just like the pandemic. If you get infected, you can't tell right away. Mm -hmm. You may infect somebody else before they figure out that you're sick. And right. that's the problem with cyber is people can't physically see it, mm -hmm. can't identify it. But it's like the pandemic and it spreads very, very quickly. Wow. So let's talk a little about risk and I know obviously cybersecurity risks, so there's that component, but as a leader and a CEO, how do you handle, two questions really, how do you handle risk and then what mistakes do you see people make with respect to risk management? That's a great question. First off, you don't know what you don't know. Right. So I would encourage everyone out there, uh, find a reputable cybersecurity organization that's there to be your partner and not necessarily sell you a product. But look at your compliance, look at your threat. We're different because I take it that IT specialists, they're great at their job and there's a big shortage there, but they're like general practitioners. If you actually get hit and you want surgery, do you want an intern? Yeah, or a specialist. Uh, doctor who's out there for a year or do you want a seasoned professional who's going to take care of you? Right, the specialist, it's, no question. Right. Yeah. So we're specialists, we think like hackers. So we look at your organization and try to figure out how to get in which we typically do. And then we talk about the differences of patching your systems. That's really risk management is what is something I don't know. I need to figure it out and get somebody who can figure it out for me and then follow through with a plan to remediate that. I love that. So basically find the blind spots or identify the blind spots and then fix it, solve it. Yeah. Put the little it's mirror up on the window, whatever you've got to do to fix it. <laughs> Sensors, whatever it is. And most of the folks, who are you going to call? It's like Ghostbusters. Who are you going to call if you have a breach? Well, if you don't identify that before it happens, you're going to be wandering 
trying to figure it out. A lot of people say, call my attorney. Yeah. <laughs> call my PR firm, my insurance. Um, no. Seconds matter when a hacker's in your network. Right. Because they're very good and know as soon as they're in there. You typically might have a hacker. A lot of companies, we do gap analysis. There have been hackers inside their network already they were unaware of. Wow. Because their systems wouldn't catch it. So they're tricky. And uh, with a 6.5 trillion, you know, going to 10, there's pretty self-funded now. It's not four kids in the basement or a couple kids in hoodies. These are state sponsored from China, Russia, North Korea, Iran, right. that are to penetrate us every day, tens of millions of times because they want our intellectual property. They want to get into your bank accounts. You know? So those are the, the risk management is knowing what your profile is and then managing it through the process so that you get to a better cyber posture. No, I love that. That's awesome. So Dave, let's talk about some timeless lessons you've learned along the way. I'm sure, I mean, you've been in, in leadership roles since, if we're, you know, since the 20s. You've seen some things, you've learned some things. What are some of those timeless lessons that you'd like to share with the audience, please? Um, get a couple of mentors. I was lucky to have three mentors here in town. They're, in fact, they're still my mentors. Um, very smart, educated. Uh, one is an uh, an accountant seasoned, another one is an attorney, and another one is an entrepreneur. And they all happen to be three friends and they wondered what I was doing. And so I got introduced to them. <clears throat> don't be afraid to ask. If you don't know it, the worst thing you can do is try to fake your way through it. Um, just understand that you're one person and you're trying to accomplish something. If you don't know the answer, reach out to some of you do. And they might have different answers depending on their experience. So I have an advisory committee that I go to regularly. I have a board and all of them have different insights. And so the time of is truly reach out whether you're trying to get funding, whether you're trying to build a business or even continue the business, how can I grow faster? And you'll be surprised how many people will reach out and help you. Yeah, that's really, really good advice. And what about some timeless mistakes you've seen people make and how do you avoid them? Um, I've made mistakes in the past. Um, typically the mistakes are making sure you've got the right people in the right job, right? Cause I have the title CEO since I've been 23, but I could be cooking bottle washer, right? It doesn't matter what my title is. We're all coworkers and treat everybody that way. And the best thing about this organization, and I told you in the beginning, they're all my friends. And they're now our shareholders because everybody in this company is a shareholder. Everybody. In fact, 99.2% of this company is owned by everyone in the company. And that's how we designed it. Um, get everybody working on the same page. But more importantly, someone can step up to a job, but they may not have the wisdom. Mm -hmm. I didn't say be smart because there, there's a lot of smart people. Mm -hmm. They may not have the experience and the wisdom to do the job. And if they have the opportunity and you think they can, then help mentor them. I love a quote I saw the other day. You're not really successful until you see someone who work with you become a leader. And they're, they actually teach somebody to become a leader. And the third generation, you can now say, I've got great leadership skills because I actually see them in leadership roles. Wow, I love uh, that. That's great. I love seeing people progress and you know, some folks, my previous companies, and when I left, they exited, they've started their own businesses, they're successful and play it forward. They call okay. me for advice. I, if I don't have it, I'll tell them I don't have it. And then I'll send them to somebody who does. And it's a uh, very, I'm very grateful for it. And it's really satisfying to see them succeed. I love that. So that's a great way to avoid those mistakes. Let's talk about leadership and what makes a great leader? You pass on obviously to future generations or other people around you, but what about the actual day-to-day -day and or week-to-week, year-to-year? What makes a great leader versus somebody that just can't lead? So a great example is one of my, the first company I put this really gung-ho individual who brought in, I couldn't figure out, people didn't understand the internet and this young guy, give me a shot 
he was a fat salesman, didn't know anything about the internet. But he, our folks were meeting 75% quota. One would meet 100%. This guy blew it out 300% the first year. Wow. Second year, 200%. Wow. Mean, he was knocking out of the park. I put him into a leadership role and he struggled because he's a really good salesperson. But I was so young at the time, 25. If he can sell like this, he can be a leader. So leadership is getting people to rally around you so that you can accomplish things. Mm -hmm. And um, Ryan, the CEO of Bolt, uh, it was, he's a really good friend and he had some great advice for me. He said, leadership is pick three to five things because a lot of people work on 20. Right. A good leader will pick three to five that impact the company the heaviest and concentrate on that. And if you ask somebody, what's the impact you bring to the company and they hesitate, they're in the wrong company. So the other thing is, is I tell everyone, I want you to be happy. I want you smiling. We have literally the least turnover in any cybersecurity company because we have shareholders. But I tell everybody when they join, which typically is through you know bringing companies to us and being part of us, if you're not happy two or three days in a row, call me and let's talk about it. If I can't solve your problem or somebody in the organization and you're still unhappy, then you're in the wrong company. Right. Let's help you get to the right company. So I encourage people to be happy at the company when people are themselves, but you can only troll so much and others control themselves. So I love that. So what are some obstacles that you've, faced and overcome in your journey to uh, getting to where you are today and lessons you've learned from them? Well, it's, it's interesting. I see a young dynamic, you know, and I keep referring to Ryan. He came from Stanford. If you graduate, if you take one year at Stanford, you can drop out. It's kind of like a badge. And mm -hmm. he did. Uh, when I started, I dropped out of college and thank goodness it was successful, but people I didn't believe it because I didn't have the experience and they would have, I brought up, would have brought some more executive team power and wisdom to the table. But the struggle was trying to raise capital in the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And probably the best thing for me was not getting that capital. Gotcha. Best decisions I've made are the ones I haven't followed through on that I was bound and determined to get. So I would encourage you to look at avenues to grow the company yourself. And then if you do need the capital, but the hurdle is having people believe in it and believe in you and your team, because that's why you invest. You believe in the team, right? And that's why we have a superstar, all-star international cast that work with me. I love that. So, yeah, no, that, that's fantastic. So, Dave, how do you handle adversity when something ha doesn't go right? You know, some people can look at become really pessimistic and go down the, a negative path. Some people look at it as an opportunity. You either win or you learn. I had some, a guest on the show say that a while ago um, and take it as an opportunity to grow. So how do you handle adversity and what lessons would you recommend people do to handle adversity going forward? The starting a company running one was easy. Everybody do it. <clears throat> so it's all perspective. If there is, so every day, and I encourage everybody, including the folks I help mentor, which are probably not the best mentor in the world, but um, if you have an obstacle, either go into it or over it, around it, under it, and the last thing, go through it. And if it's solid, you're on the wrong path. Right. So take a step back, look at why it's an obstacle, and you can get as frustrated as you want. But my grandparents raised me, and I spilled the milk, and I Oh, dang it. I would complain about it. My grandfather would just look over and go, it's going to sit there until you clean it up. The fast you clean it up, it's over. Right. So the quicker you can get through it, don't be pessimistic. Just take it and roll with it. And what did you learn from that? And, you know, you can ask anyone in this organization or previous. I really don't get frustrated because there's an answer to everything out there. You just have to find the person that has it. And if there's not, then that's an obstacle people haven't been able to get past. So that's so true. Take another route. Yeah, I love that. 
So, okay, what's the best piece of advice that you like to give your 20 year old self or 25 year old self? <sighs> Keep on being positive. And, you know, I, I know I push through it, but I probably would say, run it yourself. Don't try to raise the money and get ahead of yourself. Um, I've don't, I, I've had mistakes happen, but regretting anything No, everything happens for a reason. Yeah. Whether I know it next week or next year, or 20 years, it's funny. I look back even last week, somebody said, by the way, you know, that thing that happened like a whole month, that was, that was 2001. Da bomb. Yeah. Well, this is what happened. And I'm like, no wonder I couldn't make that happen. So you just have to understand that our life is a journey and it's all in perspective and since so is running a company. So take the great, have a great perspective. There's nothing holding you back except yourself. Now, Dave, this has been absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, investors can learn more. I like what you said too about the ticker symbol. It's CSIO. And there's a reason why that it's, um, he tells us again, it's consumer, sorry, it's, it's cybersecurity information officer. Is that what it stands for? It's called Chief Information Security Officer. Chief Information Security Officer. Gotcha. No, that's fantastic. So CISOs. CISOs. Got it. Well, beautiful. Dave, thank you so much for coming on the show, and hopefully we'll speak to you again soon. Thank you. I appreciate it, Adam. Thank you.